Hi, I'm Mike Maloney, and welcome to another CSRM podcast. Today's episode is hosted by Dr. Greg Glenville. All right, if you've been with us the last few weeks, you know and recognize the smiling face, uh, our, our pastor Biswa here, and he is the pastor of the Syracuse Nepali Church. He's been sharing with us about how you can learn from their example. They didn't have great facilities. They didn't have a lot of money. They didn't have a lot of fields. They didn't have a lot of equipment, but they're reaching a lot of people. And it's because they are willing to use what they have for the glory of God and for the outreach of the church. So again, Pastor Bidwell, thank you for being with us. Welcome. And we left last time, and you had kind of described the the uh, world mini cup of soccer and how you got all these different teams in, and then how you brought some of those uh, young people, particularly, into your indoor facility where you were. If you haven't been in Syracuse, New York, I can tell you that right there on the edges of Lake Ontario, it gets quite cold, and there's a lot of snow and ice come the winter, and so this is a uh, a warm haven for these young people and others to come into this facility. Mm -hmm. And you then have thought through, how do we take them even out of the soccer and take them into other rooms in the building, getting them comfortable within this church building? And I, I thought it was ingenious. And you had me try my luck with one little, I believe it would be called a, a Nepali game that you've that unique to America, I had never seen it. But you have these game rooms. Explain the game rooms and explain the games uh, a little bit for our, our, our American listeners that might might not know what these are, and they may even want to incorporate this. <laughs> like, go ahead. That you you get them into the soccer, and then you say, oh, by the way, we have this P A L PAL right play and learn. But then there's the play transfers from soccer into these other games, right? Mm -hmm. uh, do I have it? Yes. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, if we have a, it's a small field and only a few, like eight people will play at one time. And so the other are watching or either doing something. So we have uh, uh, ping pong tables, a couple of them. And we have called carrom board. Uh, it's like a small, uh, like a pool. <laughs> it's but different. The the, the you play we, it with the, playing with the finger. finger. Yeah, yeah. And it's like a, it's a called carrom board, carrom board or something like that. So uh, usually in uh, Asia, uh, like India and Nepal, they play a lot. And these are like four people they can play. Last time, yeah, sir got <laughs> hand on that carrom board, and uh, yeah, he he learned in first time actually. So so in the same way, we can have other different small uh, activities. Well, uh, if we have other volunteer in each uh, place, or other uh, volunteer that they build a relationship if they are new, if they are uh, like a familiar face we can talk a deeper question or they can share their heart to him or we could able to pray, pray and then learn from them and really help them in so many ways. There's a, so this is a effect. Impression is very important. So once we are impressed with that, we know how to impress because we love, and that is the impression that will last forever. They will never forget, even though they will grow older. So, and there's a 100% uh, effective uh, that they will be always listening and they're always looking for, and they will start putting faith in uh, gospel, in Jesus, that now this opportunity, every uh, uh, 
for us to talk to them and they will start, even they are alone, if we teach them rightly, if they are a problem or uh, some situation, they will start praying to God now. Lord Jesus, help me. If parents are uh, doing a very hard uh, situation going on, they will be, these are the kids, they will be praying for their parents and God always listen and God always use this small stuff. And yeah, uh, it's the last segment I know, but I have, I can keep going talking, but a uh, couple things what we are planning to do this winter is not only reaching the uh, lost, but even the pastors, we need uh, friends too. Mm. Yes. Elders and pastor who are ministering, they're always working yes. where people don't understand how tough it is. Uh, many pastors, even me also feel time, feel sometime if I'm on lonely, always people don't see the work, but we are working here 24 hour. So many uh, things are going on. We need friends. So what will be a better than sports to bring the friends? With, uh, I want to engage so much thing that uh, refresh me, re-energize me, refresh me actually. Uh, I do mountain biking. I am building a friend. I have a couple, uh, yesterday one a friend said to me, hey, we want, do you want to go bi mountain biking? Yes, let's go. Uh, weather is coming bad. Snow is coming very soon. Even we can build in that also. And what we are planning to do is, I talk with the, my uh, coach, Pastor Ryan. Uh, I want him to talk to uh, Sir George very soon. Uh, 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 he's a great man of God and he loves the sports. His heart is sports. And what we are planning to do is bring the pastor together and play together. And we will form, uh, I already shared a little bit also. So as we come together, play together, we love, uh, we care for, and we understand, we pray for each other. We grow each other. We refresh. And, and then we'll decide is each pastor or each church bring one team. If we are 10 pastors, we'll have 10 different team, young people. There can be a believer or non-believer. The believer will grow, non-believer will, they are now connected through the sports and they will start hearing the gospel and they, they will, they will not come to know Christ and they will be discipled and they will be, uh, they will be a children. And so next, that is my plan. That's one thing. Uh, another thing is I want to do a, a kids uh, in winter. I want to do a, a winter soccer camp mm -hmm. at least for eight weeks. Yeah, so yeah. The parents will bring their kids, like we'll have different age level. At least they can stop the ball and kick the ball. That's it for small kids. What more than that they can do? But they will at least learn the beginning, the basic first thing. The parents will be happy. Parents and children, both children as well as parents will going to be hearing the gospel and they will be connecting to the church or the leaders or the uh, coming to know gospel so every everything we can use as a gospel my 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 target is gospel it may not happen right there but my goal is gospel if there is no gospel i don't want to waste my time yes that's yes. i love that and and that's part of what i've come to know about you and and uh, so do appreciate you and you inspire us in that way uh at, we're kind of coming down to the, the, the end of our time. We're not quite at the end, but we've spent some, some good time together talking about these things. And I know that one of the things that, that you'd be very open to is connecting with other people. And I'm, I'm talking to those that are, are out there that might be listening and Maybe you are of a church that has millions of dollars worth of facilities uh, and you would want to take on a partner church and that, that you would become a partner church with Pastor Bismarck's church. And there might be some comings and goings. There might be some interactions. Um, I would dare say that during a summer, a church might even bring a, a short-term mission team of 10 or 20 people to come and 
put paint on your walls or mm. some some facility upgrades or to help you with your soccer camps. Um, I, I just I just would encourage other churches around the country and even around the world that would want to become a partner church with you and that you would pray for each other all year long and that you would have some comings and goings. And, and uh, I would, that's part of what we do in CSRM is our, our, our two, our two R's are relationships and resources. And so we're hoping that this, this podcast series will begin some of the relationships that somebody mm-hmm. will connect and reach out. And there may be some resources that can go back and forth. And you can learn from this brother on what he has done and what and how he goes about it. And he can provide those kinds of resources for you. And so those of you that are watching this or maybe later will watch it after you've heard it, a lot of things coming up on the screen will tell you about the contact, uh, how to get a hold of this church, this man. Uh, it will give you other things that have come up and be, you'll be able to be very connected. Mm-hmm. Um, anything that I've just mentioned, uh, Beam, anything at all you want to talk about or connect with there? Um, I didn't understand. Would you please? Yeah, yeah. I mean, is, is there something that I've talked about partnering with another church or anything like that? Just anything that you would be oh. open to do and helping with other people. Okay. Yes. Um, I love a uh, gospel. What I say is, uh, and myself also, anyway, one day I'm going to die sooner or later, this body. Yes. Maybe with the sickness, with the old age or with some horrible accident. Oh, never know. One day, anyway, I am going to die. But, what a beautiful thing if I have to die for the gospel. Yes. So that is my desire. And I am uh, really, uh, my desire is to really, this is small church, just big, uh, just started church. And uh, my desire is really to plant more churches or help many other churches to do the evangelism work any way we can use sports or we can use music you can use anything but more than anything i think uh, we need to prepare uh, we need to help to prepare a heart for the gospel everything is very important but heart is most important if we don't have heart for evangelism i i don't think any activities will work but heart is very important. So, so we know that gospel is very important. It's the power of God to those who believe. But gospel is foolishness to those who are perishing. And we know uh, God left us this beautiful, greatest opportunity before he go. And he's coming back to bring us, take us with him. And yeah, he lived. He went and he says, now I go, you go and preach the gospel. That is only one thing. And it, it didn't say how, but we can use anything for reaching the lost and we can disciple yeah. and we can teach them what we have learned. And this is, why, this is how uh, God is using every believer in the world. And that's how his kingdom never, never be stopped by anything any power, any politics, any, anything, nothing is going to stop God's work. We know that. But what a great privilege and uh, privilege for me. Like I am useless. I, used, uh, I was useless in refugee camp, have nothing, no education, no nothing. But even God used me because I, for now I, I know that I have good motive towards the ministry. I, I have good motive. What I do, I know what, why I am do. So I, I lack nothing I have with God with me. I, whatever I don't have a big thing, I have a small thing, I use the small thing. But this is how God provides. We started thinking of a small wooden wall, but God provided people 
yes and uh, help us to build that beautiful facility yes. now uh, some uh, this is how i connected with sir this is how god works by the way and what i tell uh, the other fellow pastors friends is that what is your motive toward ministry that affects a lot uh, how god is going to use us ministry our motive of ministry should not be other than glorifying god and if we ask for his glory god can provide anything because he owns everything yes, so yes. i thank you for this opportunity yes we lack many things but we lack nothing yes yes and uh, we don't want to be so much keen about thing that we don't have but use what you have and if you don't have you don't have you don't have to do but if we have something definitely we can use for the glory of god nothing we can do better than that and right. i really thank god for this opportunity and to have a, a, a mentor and uh uh well wisher like you all and and more than anything i appreciate your prayer and uh, uh so that i can keep going keep going uh, reaching the last and uh i request you to pray for me and my family and uh the future i mean this is future actually there's no future whatever we have it is happening and we need to be available but more than anything uh for my heart to keep going and for heart for the gospel uh con- continuously and that's my prayer and I, i i love to pray for you also and please pray for me also thank you very much and your heart comes through your heart very very much comes through and jesus shines there those of you that have been watching the csrm podcast uh this and you have not tuned in for the last few weeks go back and you'll hear the story of how god rescued this man's life out of a refugee camp and how he has been used in rescuing many other lives ever since and you will find a, an inspirational story all the way around i will i will also say that uh, what what we are doing in csrm is we are creating regional round tables and like even when i finish this recording i will go and join a number of people in northeast ohio that will be coming together and as far as i know there is nothing like that that is going on in the syracuse area but if you find or know someone in the syracuse area and that might that might want to be part of a group like that we would love to be able to connect all of the people that are in that area together that you could that you could build on each other and that you could develop this camaraderie and so anybody that knows anything about Syracuse that would like to pass it on to us and connect them with Pastor Biswa please do uh get in touch with us and again all the contact information is coming up there on the screen and if you're listening it'll all be on our website so please feel free to make these contacts and uh also we are very hopeful that Pastor Biswa will be coming to the reach gathering in Houston in March we're not promising that but we are encouraging him strongly to try to come and and lead a session or two there and so these connections that may have started with these podcasts my point is hoping that they'll go on and on and on and and so please feel free to be in contact and and make whatever contribution uh add this church to your church's prayer list at the very least etc cetera, etc cetera. that's why we do this to build these relationships to make these connections pastor biswa your the the last word is yours anything in these closing moments yeah um this year uh uh the theme bible verse is uh coming to me and i encourage with everyone same way fight the good fight of faith mm. and uh uh and hold on the salvation there you go that's very important so we are in the fight we need to fight good fight of faith and then hold on the salvation so that's how i'm encouraged 
uh, this world is very tough and especially uh, worried, uh, not really, but really about the next generation. Yes. Is it going tougher and tougher, tougher. And I think the house is number one place where we can help them to know God and know right thing. And next is the responsibility is the church as a pastor or the church really, really big responsibility. Uh, otherwise they will off track and the days are evil and time are evil. So only thinking of them, all these sports and music can draw the young people where we can teach them the right thing. Not just reaching the lost, but who we are thinking about reaching the lost, but in our own house, in our own church, the young people, they need to be rich also. They need to reach as well as teach also the right thing, the first impression or the good impression. So I think then the next generation will do better than us. Otherwise, if you don't take care of our own family or kids or church kids, I don't think uh, there will be anyone. Is It will be, but it is hard for, That's because right. uh, you and me, uh, all of us, the leaders team, in the world right now, the present leaders God is using. We pray that uh, the next uh, generation leaders like us, they will do better than us. That's our prayer and hope uh, this sports, uh, music, uh, music, sports, and all this will help them to know bigger thing than that. So thank you very much. And Would you close us and would you pray uh, a prayer in your native tongue for us. Sure, sure, yes, yeah. Thank you very much, and thank you everyone uh, for listening uh, this post podcast. And uh, I would like to pray for you, and as well pray for me also. Thank you very much. Sorga prithibi ko malik. Amle ati ne prem garnu ne pita tapale dhanne baad. Probi Yesu dhanne baad tapai तपाईको प्रेमको लागि बलिदानको लागि हाम्रो लागि तपाई क्रुसमा मर्नु भयो गाडिनु भयो मरेकोबाट जीवित हुनु भयो आज हामीले जीवन दिनु भएको छ हाम्रो पापले क्षमा गर्नु भएको छ पवित्र आत्मा परमेश्वर धन्यवाद हामीलाई एक्लो छाड्नु भएको छैन तपाईले तपाई हाम्रो साथमा हुनुहुन्छ हामी जहाँ जान्छौ हामी जे गर्छौ जे बोल्छौ जे गर्छौ तपाईको सहायताको कारणले मात्र गरिरहेका छौ The CSRM Podcast is a production of CSRM and their production house, Overwhelming Victory. Dr. Greg Linville is the executive producer, and Scott Stedman is the associate producer and editor. To learn more about CSRM, visit csrm.org. For more information about Overwhelming Victory, visit overwhelmingvictory.org. The CSRM Podcast is the flagship member of the podcast network, Overwhelming Victory Radio. For more information on Overwhelming Victory Radio or to listen to our partner podcasts, visit overwhelmingvictory.org backslash OV Radio. For CSRM Podcasts, I'm Mike Maloney. Have a blessed day.